destination. It's Dukes and Bell on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. We start off every day and every hour by saying, hey, man. I'll tell you this, Mike. Uh, I got extra fired up, and I've been fired up for this offseason. I've been fired up for the free agent period. But I got a little extra fired up today when I heard Calais Campbell is going to join the Falcons. It's a one-year deal. Um, he is a pro bowler, guys. A lot of people feel like he's a future Hall of Famer. Uh, Walter Payton, man of the year award. Coming to this team, he brings so much of what we need. And as I've been saying to you guys, like you're hearing all these other guys around the country and people that don't know anything about Falcon football talk about this mm. free agent class and, and where it ranks. And, and I've been saying, Terry Fontenot's doing a great job so far with right. this free agent period. Now, the draft is separate. We'll see and grade the draft independently of what's happened with free agency. But I think it's also going to make, Mike, our draft a little bit easier because now all of a sudden, now you're looking at this maybe a little bit differently if you're going to go draft that corner or maybe if you still want to go DT. Now, again, Calais Campbell, he is getting up there. He's not going to be around five or six years. No. But if he could give us a couple of good years, Mike, and improve this defense, which I think he's going to do, right. I am very excited about the possibilities. And I heard Andy Renda talking about it. Yeah, I mean, whether it was just simply for the money or, you know, he had options. He had a bunch of teams that were interested in his services. And Arthur Blank, we used to joke around, you know, when Arthur first bought the team, a, B, C, Arthur Blank closes. There's a free agent. Arthur puts the the, uh, the Arthur Blank treatment on. And guys, we talked about how impressive it can be. So Calais Campbell, a leader, both on and off the field, a good guy. Now, again, I don't know if it'll be Dwight Freeney 2.0, uh, but he certainly is a guy that you want to have in that locker room with all of your young players because he's that kind of a stud. And he's a he's a hundred. If he gets a couple, he'll be a hundred sack guy in his career. Well, listen, I, I, there's a chance, okay, and I'm not going out on a limb here. Calais Campbell might be the best defensive player on the defensive line that we have. And I'm not disrespecting Grady. He's just a different guy. Mike, he plays all of the, the defensive line positions. You can put him in the interior. Right. You can put him on the edge. He's a guy that doesn't have to come off the field on rundowns or pass downs. So I don't know what the rotation is going to look like. I'll leave that up to our defensive coordinator, Ryan Nielsen. But he is a guy that can play up and down the line. That flexibility, we haven't had. Yeah. And so, again, I'm not going to tell you this is going to be a top defense. But, Mike, if we're in the top 15 – we have made some real strides, and I, I do believe that's achievable depending on what this draft looks like. But I like our secondary, and now I'm starting to like our front seven a little bit more. And yesterday we found out late in the show they're still trying to get a deal done with Rashawn Evans. Well, this is just a rotational guy, but it's one of the best guys you could get. And we've got a bunch of young players now combined with some guys that are veterans. And this is a dude who, again, you've never had this kind of rotation. You had to go back to 2017, and that's when we consider guys like Rashid Hageman. So we might be actually in a better position on our defensive line rotationally, especially in the interior, than we've been in years on this team. And just for just for a field of reference, I saw this guy for years when Florida State was getting into the lean years under Bowden. This guy was a machine for Miami. He was like, Carl, like a refrigerator with legs. He is a mountain of a man. So you wait till you see this guy next to Grady. It's going to be a blast. All right, guys, want to know what you think. Um, and when I say we're a destination, you guys remember all that conversation. No, nobody want to come play for the Falcons. You remember that? Who would want to come here? When you build it the right way and you have, it seems like, forward motion, forward progress, which is what we have. Um, one guy hit me up. He said, Mike, uh, Dukes and Bell, th th we have to be now the front runners when you talk about this division if D. Ritter shows up and the defense is better. I totally agree with him. The big question mark is Desmond Ritter. That, it just is. Now, that's that's the biggest question mark on this football team. Now, we, we know the pass rush. We may, you know, draft a corner. We may draft an edge rusher. but And we may get another draft uh, of an edge rusher in the second round. I don't know. Either way, Carl, as the defense continues to come together, we have put pieces on the offensive line. We've got to find a left guard, though, too. I know we've got some veterans that will be vying for that job. But at the end of the day, this team has got to have outstanding quarterback play. Derek Carr is down there in New Orleans. Don't know what Carolina is going to do, but it's going to be an upgrade. They'll have a guy learning on the job. Same maybe goes for Tampa, but Baker Mayfield is going to be the starter. Carl, we have arguably the chance to win this division, but we're not going to get anywhere if Desmond Ritter doesn't do all the things that Arthur Smith told the media he's going to do, which is take that next progression, that next step. And it's not a not a baby step. No, That's it's a, big, a one. big step. It is a big step. D. Ritter, um, you know, that that is a question, but this defense – just from a personnel standpoint on paper, is better than what we ended the season with. Big shout-out to Tiffany Blackman from the Morning Shift. Uh, check out the show, uh, Weekday Mornings, guys, 6 to 9. She tweeted out today, and she was actually on the phone with Calais Campbell during the show this morning as he told her he had visits lined up. Jets, mm -hmm. Bills, 
ultimately decided on the Falcons because he believes in what they're doing, and he feels like with this roster they have a chance. Here's the deal. If you're an older guy at the end of your career, you still want to you still want to win. You still want to attempt to try to get the Super Bowls. This is not Calais Campbell taking the biggest and most lucrative deal. I don't believe that, Mike. This is about him saying, all right, what do I feel comfortable, and, and what are they talking about? Uh, Tiffany also said that um, – he did say he had that phone call with Arthur Blank, as Mike alluded to. What Arthur Blank said to him, who knows? But at the end of the day, that's a big deal that the owner can connect with a guy like this and convince him, help convince him, Mike, that this is the right place. And he said, and this is Calais Campbell's words, um, Blank's commitment to the ATL and how he wants to help him make an impact in the community was huge. So Tiffany Blackman, big shout out. Listen to the morning shift, but she had that this morning here yeah. on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. That's why I said Arthur Blank closes. I mean, you know, we haven't had a chance for him to go do any closing lately because anytime we had a free agent, let's be honest, last time we had a free agent, it was, uh, well, we made the move for Dante Fowler. Ugh. So, I mean, this is now a chance to build up all the things in the trenches. It's not necessarily sexy, but Calais Campbell, I think, even to the casual fan, is a name you recognize because he's been a part of some really good football teams, great defenses, and he's an excellent football player with a great work ethic. He's been the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Checks all the boxes, especially for developing young players, and we got a lot of young players on this defense. All right, with that said, the veteran leadership thing, everybody wants him to be, uh, who, who was it, Mike, we went out and got the year we go to the Super Bowl? Who was that? Dwight Freeney. I'm not going to say that he's going to be Dwight Freeney. He'll be who he is, but I do think the veteran leadership thing does play. I do think that matters for a team like ours who's still in this transition and young guys and you got free agents now, but you need that mix. You need young, you need vets, and you need that in between. And if you have all of that and everybody's on the same page, you can really try to do something special. And I think that's where, where the Falcons are. If you are a non-believer that, hey, we won seven games last year. I'm telling you right now, the roster's already better, and it'll be better after the draft. Right. This, is, this is not a, we're going to sit around for two more years, Mike, and hope we make the playoffs. This thing is turning around fairly quickly. But again, if Desmond Ritter can't do his job, we're not going to go anywhere. We'll be another seven-win season because you've got to get this development at the quarterback. And look, I'm not dogging him. I've wanted – you know the drag. You know you've been listening. We've been talking about this. You don't want to make it a drag, but we've been talking. He's got to be the guy for a number of reasons because you've already said you're out on Lamar Jackson. Now, Carl still thinks there's a, sl a sliver of No, 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 one. no. Listen, if Coach says it and uh, Arthur Blank yesterday came on the show and he said, look, we, we think he's a great player. We're talking about Lamar Jackson. But he feels good about the direction of this team. I am going to sit back and allow all of you who continue to tell me that we're going to be fine. I hope we are. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys right now that I know definitively that Desmond Ritter is going to be and take the next step and deliver. I can't sit here no. and tell you that. And that's what I said yesterday. I mean, look, I want it. We all wish it. We want to will this thing to happen. I wanted to see him on the field a hell of a lot earlier than we finally saw him with four weeks left last year. But nobody, Herm Edwards came on the show and said, you can't tell in four games. We're going to believe that Arthur Smith is privy to more stuff in practice and everything, the work habits, the film study, all the things which we don't know and we'll see about. But there's still a lot of, I mean, there's a, there's a big X. There's an X factor. Desmond Ritter is the biggest X factor in the 2023 season. So with that said, you see Terry Fontenot continuing to, continuing to add pieces. Um, and, and again, I don't know if he's done. I mean, we still, we still have you know, a, a, a small amount of money that we could allocate to some other players, Mike, if you wanted to do that or try to bring in somebody that you think can help. But I don't know if he's done. Every day it's been something, right? Small signing. A little bit bigger signing, medium signing. He's been doing stuff. But everything the Falcons have said, they've been, look, they've been very demonstrative. It's one thing, and we've talked about misdirection pre-draft. There's no way we're drafting a quarterback at eight. I'm convinced we're not doing quarterback at eight. And some people have been holding out hope for that. I mean, if you, unless you're saying this is the greatest, similar to what the 49ers did, where you're just sandbagging everybody the year they went up to three to get Trey Lance. But I got a feeling Arthur Smith is not a guy that plays those games, even though there's gamesmanship yeah. pre-draft. I just think they're kind of saying this is it. They're going to ride or die with Ritter. And those guys, by the way, Fontenot and Smith, will ride or die with Ritter. Well, here's the thing, though. Uh, will they? Because being a third-round pick, what's the realistic expectations? They didn't risk their butt picking him third overall in the draft or first for that matter. Mike, if if he doesn't But if there's work, a quarterback available at eight and he's one of considered one of those top four, I mean, or Well, but, but here's the deal. If everybody's on board from what we understand, general manager, the front office, the owner, and everybody says we gotta give him a shot and we're gonna give him that shot. And let's just say it doesn't look the way you expected. They could shift gears next year, Mike. They could change course. But again, this goes back to Arthur having faith. He did tell us, yes, you'll hear the conversation coming up. But the Falcon fans won't have that patience for a fourth. Now, it'll be six years without a trip to the playoffs. But sounds great. You know, hey, 
We, we don't get what the traction from Ritter. We'll go get a quarterback next year, and you'll probably be 7-10 and 10 again, and you'll probably have to move up and trade a lot of first-round picks to get up there to number one to get that quarterback. But isn't that what Hypothetically. They're te- but isn't that what they're telling us, though? The, I, I, like, like, that's what they're telling us. They're saying, we're going to see how this year goes, and if it doesn't go right or as, as, as expected, we'll, we'll, we'll shift. We'll, we'll make the change. We'll, we'll pivot. We'll be fine. We'll go get another guy. That's what they're telling us. Or maybe, Mike, they're saying, hey, we feel confident enough in Heineke that if it doesn't go right, we can we can give him right. the reins and maybe we can win some more games. But Heineke, you know, the roles are again, everybody's on the same page. Roles are clearly defined. Ritter's the starter, Heineke's the backup, and they're feeling he's gonna see again. They're talking about the future tense. He is going to do something, which we don't know he can do. And that is to be an NFL starting quarterback that can put you in the playoffs in his second season after just four games. I love the Calais Campbell signing, guys. It is a big deal, and you should be excited. 